to just the, an update on current affairs or things that have popped up in social media that have caught my attention and I know they've caught your eye. And the first is super controversial just because of the word that it's been lumped in with. And that, of course, is, is Karen the new N-word for white ladies? <laughs> Chat to me about that. Eh? I mean, what, what's going on here? The thing is, it's almost so inconceivable that I don't know how we're talking about it. But from what I read is that the claim is that this journalist made is that it's ageist, it's sexist, and it's somehow classist. How? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a pretty good question. But no, I, I, I think it's, 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 and I spoke about it briefly on the last podcast, we're in this age of extreme sensitivity where you can't call someone a Karen. And it's a, it's a bit like the, the debates we've had of can white people, uh, sorry, rather can black people be racist and how it's unpacking a position of power. And because it's not from a position of power, it can't be racist. It's almost the same as when you call a middle-aged privileged white woman Karen. It's not from a position of power. She's got the power. That's why she's speaking to the manager. That's why she's got such a terrible haircut. But what can you do? It's, it's this new age we live in. Yeah, and I mean, I think for me, uh, even, even on the side of the left, uh, I've always worried about, you know, oppression Olympics uh, <laughs> when it comes. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. You know, we sort of try and obviously, I mean, this is not to disregard, you know, intersectionality and the different ways in which people experience some form of discrimination or the other. Uh, but I guess it, we, we, we must be careful because we can run uh, into the risk of now trying to have different hierarchies and standards of now I'm black, I'm black woman, I'm white woman and disabled, I'm this. And you know, it, it, and then it just becomes too much and really uh, makes the, the real fight lose, lose its essence. And, and, and we almost trivialize the struggles and experiences that people are having like on, on a daily basis. You know, this is not, uh, yeah, it's not, it shouldn't be reduced to Operation Olympics, but rather us really dealing with what people are going through and, and the experiences. Yeah, no, I think you've summed that up pretty well. I would in no sentence compare the suffering of someone from a Karen meme to that of which uh, black women have to go through. So anyway, I think we've given Karen and her, Starbucks buddies enough Shame, time. Karen. <laughs> Shame. And that also, I wanted to, in South Africa, it's not really Karen. I think it's Ubeki. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think Becky comes from, well, it probably is. I'm not sure. But Ubeki does Becky Tele. come from a Beyonce, a Beyonce uh, song? I'm not sure. You, you throw Becky around. I'm a Becky. <laughs> But anyway, let, let's press on, and which leads me to the next point, and it's also something that's been all over the news, all over social media, divides debate, and that is when, um, obviously, COVID's had its effect that it has had, and communities are ravished, uh, underprivileged communities suffering particularly, and then you've got all these people who go into either townships or rural areas, and they do amazing deeds, and they're providing food and services, but then the, the discussion that I've observed online is that the whole process is marred by the fact that these people are now photographing or videoing the experience. What, what's, your, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably, it's, it's been an issue really even before COVID uh, or, or, or the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, really, and, and, and why people do acts of service and how the discourse around philanthropy and what it means uh, you know, the Instagram generation, uh, imagine, you know, doing something good for the disadvantage if you're not going to post about it on your story or you're not going to put it up on Instagram. You know, it's almost uh, uh, un, 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 unimaginable these days. So it, it really calls into question uh, the intentions behind all these uh, uh, acts of kindness. And I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not everyone, right? Because I think there is an added benefit in terms of trying to encourage and trying to create some form of social awareness with respect to getting buy-in. Uh, so I guess when people see that there are people who are doing and are trying to have an impact in society, that can create some social and community consciousness within South Africa to motivate people into doing it. But I think it does run the risk, again, of it being a, 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 a sort of a, a competition of 
likes and photos more than dealing with the problem itself. Um, and then I think lastly, it also, it, 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 it fails to look at issues structurally, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, it, it, the, the whole idea of philanthropy, the whole idea of food parcels, yes, they, they're great, um, but I think we, we cannot look at them as an end in, of, in and of themselves. But I think what, what the sort of Instagram and Twitter and uh, Facebook sort of taking pictures generation is, they make that act an end in, in and of itself as opposed to a means to an end. So it's like you carry on with, the, with your life the whole week and then you post a nice picture on, on Saturday about, you know, social outreach and you've ticked your box for, you know, uh, feel goodism or philanthropy for the month or even the year. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a problem, but I do think that there is an added benefit, but we must be careful of the risks uh, of it as well. Yeah, no, I think that's, a, that's an apt response. Um, uh, for me, it's, of course, these people are doing fantastic things, and that's great, but it's, it also it could more ring to the, the society that we live in, and it's the age of digitalization. We take photos of everything. Sure. No one cares about what your breakfast looks like, but for some reason, it's on the internet. So it could just be symptomatic of that, and I think we'd like to have uh, the faith in humanity that it's been done for the right reasons, and shout out to all those fantastic groups and people who are doing it and I find also the ones who like bring up these oh well you know they're taking photos are also people who are probably not involved in in community service themselves but anyway that's neither here nor there yeah moving on to something that I know has just positively titillated your human spirit and you've been blasting it all over Facebook and Instagram and before I get into that I love the way you disseminate information you hit up the WhatsApp story which I don't know who <laughs> uses that. Then you go onto Instagram and then you come across for Facebook with a little dessert treating us. So, but um, you've got a, the, the you've got a dish for different uh, constituencies. Uh, you're playing a lot of consist constituencies these days, but the Cuban doctors, I know you want to chat about them and the 200 that have made their way to South African shores. Yeah, I, th I thought that was amazing. Um, even symbolically, you know, uh, obviously, we know that Cuba has a relationship, uh, particularly with liberation movements, not only in South Africa, but Africa as a whole. So I thought just, just symbolically for me, uh, that site, you know, there was, the, there was a video going around uh, of Commandant Fidal sort of giving a speech and saying that the legacy that he hopes to leave behind is not that of sending nukes around the world or investing in chemical weapons or investing in arms but rather investing in sort of public health and ensuring that he can contribute to the to 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 to, to scientists to doctors to specialists um, and that becomes his legacy and i think really um he would be a very 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 happy man currently because as you would know cuba is not only sending doctors to south africa but they're sending doctors to other parts of the world and quite surprisingly as well, uh, I must just verify, but I think they've even uh, uh, said that they're open to the idea to send doctors to the states, uh, which of course is quite shocking, understanding the political dynamics between Cuba and the states, uh, issues of sanctions and all that. But I think just to see a human face uh, under these times uh, for any young socialist and communist, uh, I, think, I think yesterday was, was, was a moment for the books, eh? Yeah, for sure. And, but would you say that you'd be able to reduce this to communism versus capitalism? Where where'd you weigh in that? Weigh in on that? Look, perhaps perhaps of course it's 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 a small symbolic gesture, but I think what what a conversation that it could it, it could spark would be to say that what is the what what what, what is the philosophy behind sort of uh, socialism or communism uh, and the philosophy behind capitalism? And then we try and then interrogate what has been the impact, or rather, what are the spillover effects uh, of sort of crude capitalist accumulation in the world? And what are the spillover effects of company, of so not companies, of countries that have dedicated themselves to sort of uh, uh, socialist projects? And I think the, 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 the Cuban doctors sort of coming into South Africa uh, uh, yesterday, last night at midnight, speaks, speaks to that, to say that what has been the attitude of, 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 of communist and socialist nations when it comes to the relationship that they share with the third world and what has been the attitude of capitalist global forces in the relationship that they have with the third world. So I think 
we, I mean, it would be an important conversation to have from that lens uh, rather than a sort of a sort of boxing match between communism and capitalism. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a, it's not a movement that is going to come without a paycheck, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm not saying that 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 should uh, vilify what the Cuban government have done. It's obviously amazing, and any support will be uh, 